Hey guys, Dungeon J here, coming back with my weekly discussion video. Uh, actually, I'll probably have two this week, but uh, this one is actually one that kind of hit me uh, sun-like because I was sitting there in a stream last night talking uh, to Tips, talking to uh, a bunch of people actually. I think Mr. GM was in there, Moonsty, Stay Safe, s Van. And uh, they were sitting there trying to uh, get BlizzCon tickets. And while they were sitting there, I posed a question. Do you think at BlizzCon they're actually going to talk about a uh, release date for Classic Vanilla? And uh, Tips made an interesting point. He thinks that that's when they're going to talk about the beta. And it made me think a lot about is there going to be an open beta or is it going to be a closed beta? And I got a couple points about this that I want to go ahead and get across. Classic Vanilla WoW has already happened. All right, so that's the first and foremost thing. It's already been established. We've already played the game. This is a, a, a recopy of something that we've played. And one of the reasons why an open beta may not be a good thing is because it might spoil the egg. Now, a lot of people already know about the gameplay and stuff like that. They know about the quest lines and stuff like that. And having an open beta may actually kind of sour what they're trying to package and deliver on a nostalgic good. Now that being said, yes, I would be a fan of an open beta just for the bug fixes and stuff like that, but we have to first kind of look at exactly how they're diving in to set up uh, the classic WoW itself and exactly where they're going to be going with it. And if you get a lot of people involved with the open beta and they're trying to show off different approaches that they're doing with the classic vanilla on their current core, first thing that people are going to probably notice is the differences and this could be a good or a bad thing as I've stated before in previous videos vanilla World of Warcraft is not going to be the same guys there's no way around it it's not going to be the classic vanilla that we all want um, you know there's a lot of people on the fence about no changes or changes or whatever bottom line there's going to be changes guys it's going to be different as I've outlined before uh, just the rotation of the characters, the segment rotations, the gameplay is going to feel a little bit different than it did in Classic Vanilla. Classic Vanilla had a different archetype uh, to character models and character movements. And when they import these in into the new core, unfortunately what's going to happen is it's going to be on a very faster and more streamlined process. And the number one thing that you're going to notice is that it's not going to be a one for one. You're not going to have a one for one for gameplay. You're not going to have a one for one for character moral uh, movement. It's going to feel a little bit different. Now they're going to probably be able to, anything that has a timer on it, they can emulate pretty much one for one. They can emulate the global cooldowns. They can emulate the, the, the speed of, uh, you know, uh, attacks and stuff like that as far as what they reflect. But what we see on the screen is going to be vastly different than what we saw on the classic vanilla client. Even if it's a 1.12.1, whatever the case, we're going to be on an updated course. So you might as well just go ahead and say to yourself, all right, so these are my expectations walking in. Number one, the uh, gameplay, the character models are going to look different, even if they're the original character models. Okay, so even if they're the original character models, movement's going to be different, guys. Movement's going to look different, movement's going to feel different. Even if they don't have the nice little billowing cape that we see in the modern World of Warcraft uh, on retail, we're still going to see differences in the smoothness of the play style. And is that an improvement or uh, not an improvement? I don't know, guys. I mean, for me, it's an improvement and I don't really mind it. But for some people, it may actually be an issue. And that's something that they need to be aware of. And that's going to be broadcasted if they do an open beta. Bottom line, if they get a bunch of people, streamers, uh, people like me in there that make videos about this kind of stuff, then you're going to see how we break down and we analyze exactly what is the difference between the original client versus the client that they're going to be putting together for us to play on. And it's going to be a lot different. Now, also that being said, I think it's going to be kind of hilarious in a way if they do do an open beta because what we're going to see is we're going to see that happens in the private server scene. We're going to see a emulated version of vanilla World of Warcraft on a new core. That means there are a ton of bug fixes that need to happen. There's a ton of probably broken stuff and it's not going to be a smooth transition. They're going to have the same issues that the private server scene has been having for a long time. And this is also why I think that the development time has been extended so long because even if you have a core group team players, you got 10 to 12 people, they're going through and they're, they're trying to re-script everything. They're trying to make sure everything interacts together. And bottom line, 
there's going to be a lot of issues that are just going to have to get panned out and another interesting thing that i thought i'd talk about is that there'll probably be a patch day there will probably be a patch day a maintenance day for classic vanilla wow very similar to retail just for the simple fact that as you know or you may not be aware when you fix something sometimes other things break and it might be something very obscure but it needs to be fixed so there's going to be some downtime and there's going to be some maintenance and this is one of the reasons why I would be a fan of an open beta versus a closed beta just to get enough hands in the pot to actually be able to navigate and fix all the bugs that are going to exist in the updated cores. Now all that being said with Tips uh, actually going forward and saying that he thinks that they're going to probably talk about the beta release then I think we're going to have a teaser trailer. Alright so if they don't have something uh, put together uh, as far as a uh, release date or anything like that, which is really what I was thinking that they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and push ahead and have a solid release date simply uh, to put it on a timeline and basically get the customer base hyped to get something going. Because if they don't do it at this BlizzCon, when is the next time available that they can really bring it out there and they can advertise it and they can start doing the campaign and, uh, and the marketing? unless they're going to wait till the next BlizzCon to do that. And if we're going to sit there and wait till the next BlizzCon, then the expectations for when Classic Vanilla WoW is going to be released is going to go really further into the future than I'm thinking. Then we're talking, what, a 2020 release? Which could still happen, could still be a potential. It's kind of crazy to think of it like that, 2020 being the time that they actually released Classic Vanilla. It would take, you know, at that time, it would be over two years um, for them to have worked on the project which is supposed to be basically just transporting uh, data from one core to another and fixing bugs. I think that's too long of a production timeline. I think that it doesn't fit into their, uh, their product cycles as far as what they're going to be offering for World of Warcraft. Now they've got a lot of products uh, out there right now. As uh, I speculate, there's probably going to be something that they're going to release for the mobile. There's probably going to be some something for Diablo. I think those are two of the things that they're going to be working on. Also, it's kind of interesting to think that they may be working on an FPS MMO. You know, they've uh, actually hired in some people, uh, some designers that fit that role. And so there could be something on the back burner, like an MMO, a future MMO that's actually in a first person genre. And my mind is blown. I'm, I don't know where that would go. Is that StarCraft, man? Are we talking about StarCraft? Are we talking about a StarCraft MMO on the mobile? I mean, I know that they're interested in the RTS, but an MMO of StarCraft would be like uh, really my hype level would go through the roof if that's actually the case. But anyway, that's beyond uh, exactly what I was bringing to this video today. Uh, what I'm really talking about is I think that it would be a good idea for them to have an open beta. If they do it at the BlizzCon, then that would be a good time to actually set it up. And I hope that the community can get involved. I hope it's an open beta. I hope it's not a closed. Uh, Blizzard does try to be transparent, so that's kind of what we're looking forward to. And that's going to be it for this uh, discussion video this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I've been working on another one, and it's more of a, uh, a guide. So it may take a couple more days, or it may take a week actually for me to pan it all out. I'm trying to get it out there for you guys, and uh, we'll see if I can get that wrapped together. But that's it for me on this video. Guys, have a great day gaming. Later.